Thank you, worship team. Um, how many of us are glad that we can stand here this morning, amen, that we can bring our worship, bring our praise, bring our honor to God, to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, amen. Um, here at Christian Fellowship, something we value is prayer. Um, but not only prayer, but coming alongside other people. Um, not only praying for ourselves, our family, but the person to the left and to the right of us. Amen. And so um, today we're going to do something a little different. I want you guys to um, hold the person's hand next to you. Uh, put your hand on their shoulders. Um, and I want you, for the next few moments, um, to pray for them. Amen. Um, like I said, here at Christian Fellowship, we really believe in standing alongside you, praying for you, encouraging you. Um, and so this morning, we want to be intentional uh, with our time, and we want to take this moment to do that. And so while I pray, um, I want you guys to pray for the people next to you, pray for their families, um, for their workplaces, uh, for their children, for their parents. Amen. Um, so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, because this morning, Lord, we can stand before you and we can bring all our burdens to you, Lord. We thank you, God, because today is just not another Sunday, Lord, but today is a new day, a new day where we can come before you, where we can come together, Lord, and grab a hold of your promises, Lord. We thank you, God, that this morning, we can declare your word. We can declare your truth, your promises over our lives and over the lives of the people next to us. We thank you, God, because this morning you see us, you know us, you care about us, Lord, and most of all, you love us. God, we thank you for the person that's next to us, to our left and to our right. We thank you, God, because in their circumstances, Lord, in their situations, God, you see them. Lord, we thank you that you are working in their lives. We thank you, God, that you are working in their households, in their families, God. We thank you that you're working in their, in their workplaces, Lord. We thank you because you are using them, not in an ordinary way, Lord, but you are using them in a grand way, God. And we thank you, we thank you, Lord, because this morning we know that you are in control. We know, God, that you are making a way, Lord, that you are creating rivers in deserts, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are doing something new in our lives. And so this morning, we just want to say thank you. We want to acknowledge you for who you are and what you've done and what you are doing. And so we thank you, we love you, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, hey, we just want to say welcome to Christian Fellowship. We're so glad that you guys are here, and we're so glad that you guys are spending this Sunday morning with us. And so at this time, we're going to do our one-minute mingles, so go ahead, feel free to say hi to someone, and we'll see you back here in a minute. Amen. You guys can find a way back to your seats. Oh 
Awesome. Isn't it so good to say hi to people? You just kind of want to keep doing it for more than a minute. Um, awesome. Well, again, we just want to say welcome. I know that was kind of loud. But I'm just excited to be here. Um, I'm excited to see all of you guys. And so, again, we just want to say welcome. We're so glad that you guys are here. Um, here at Christian Fellowship, we love generosity. Amen. And so um, we are a generous church. We are a generous people. Um, we love to give. It's our hearts to give not only our finances and our tithes, our offerings, but also our time, our gifts, um, our relationships. Amen. And so um, in this moment, we just want to give you guys an opportunity to do that. Um, so up on the screen, we have our push pay information where you can give online. Um, another way you can give is on your way out the door at the end of service. On the connect table, we have a basket where you can drop off your physical tithes and offerings. Um, so we just want to say thank you guys so much for giving. Um, thank you guys for continuing to be faithful to this church and to God. Amen. We would not be here this Sunday, this morning, without you guys. Um, so with that being said, we do have a few things happening this week. Um, our first announcement is that this week, March 24th, March 25th, Thursday, Friday, we have our two-day youth conference. Um, and that youth conference is titled Stay Awake. Um, so that's going to be for all the youth, all the high school age, high school students. Um, this Thursday and this Friday, we're going to be having a guest speaker, Pastor Jake from Free Chapel in Orange County. Um, and so if you guys are going to be here for that, uh, make sure you guys see our youth leaders. They're around here. Raise your hand for more information. Awesome. So... Um, we also have our weekly announcements. Our first weekly announcement is that we have life groups Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now Thursday. So uh, if you guys aren't connected, if you guys aren't plugged into a life group, we want to encourage you guys to do that. It's an awesome time where we get together with people in a small group. Um, we go into the Word together. We build relationships. Um, we build family. We build connections. And it's an awesome time. You don't want to miss out. We believe that life groups is the DNA of this church, and so you're missing out on an essential, on a big part of this church if you're not connected. Um, so we do have life group information on the back table, the connect table. Um, after service, you guys can look at that. Um, we also have youth services every Thursday, 7 p.m., and uh, we also have pre-service prayer every Sunday, 9.30 a.m. here. It's an awesome time, not just for people serving, but anybody is welcome to join us and pray. 9.30 a.m. every Sunday. Amen? So I believe that's all the announcements. And with that being said, we want to welcome up our pastor, Aaron Ortega. He wanted to do a runway walk today. Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning. There's some special faces that we have not seen in a long time. It's been good to see everybody. What a blessing. How many of us are, are having a good morning so far? Yeah? Okay, good. Good. How many of us are ready to receive? Good. Um, I want to do a double shout out for, this, uh, for that two-day conference for our youth. How many of us are parents? How many of us believe in b believing in our parents and believing in our kids? You know, it's very important. One of the things we want to start and really uh, reinforcing is having our parents involved with our youth and not just our youth being on a youth. But we're a family church, amen? And so it's important. So that youth event, if not just a youth thing, please join us. If you're a parent, come see, come listen. And it's good to see because we want to grow as a family. Amen. Man, that's important that we, we grow. We grow as a family. We go, through, we go through pains as family. We go through hell with family. Amen. Some of you guys are like, yeah, we go. Through. 
Yes, and then, and then we go through the victories together, amen? That's what, that's what family is about, amen? And so when we do, when we, do we don't just say, oh, that's that, that for the youth. We don't do that. There's a thing that I, I, um, I'm not knocking this, but have you ever noticed that there's some TV shows, um, and I always say they make the, the kids look really cool, but the parents are like goopballs? I'm not a goopball. It's the other way around. You're learning to be cool. I'm the cool one. You're learning. Amen? Parents, parents are the demonstrators of what life is about. We're not, we're not knuckleheads. We, we know what's up. Amen? All right, baby. So I just encourage you guys that the two-day youth event, that is on Thursday. Even if your kids are not even in uh, the Ignite, you, and hopefully one day they will be. And when they do come in, you can see what they're all about. Amen? Good. I'm really giving a hard shout out to the Ignite team. Where's, where's Ignite at? <laughs> I like your vibe, girl. Okay, good. This morning, I'm excited because I'm going to preach a message, and I think this is going to be a challenge. I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. I love, love learning. How many of us are learners here? I just, how many of us love YouTube for the sake of learning? I'm a, lear- I'm, a, you, I'm a learner. I love to learn information, and I love to ask questions, and I, I just, I'm a pupil, and when it comes to this stuff, I love it. I love lear- learning, 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 and the best way to learn is to ask questions, which this morning is, I have a question this morning, and this question I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask a lot of questions this morning. Are you guys ready for that? And you guys don't have to answer directly, and you don't have to have to answer. But it is very imperative and crucial for us to learn how to reflect. It's very important for us as a body and believers learn how to meditate. Right? When you begin to meditate, the word meditation, when you meditate, you constantly think of something and you seek it. And the word seeking is questioning it. And we need to learn how to question. If you don't have answers, then you need to ask questions. Amen? If you want answers, ask questions. That's the life lesson right there. If if you're trying to understand why your man is acting the way he's acting, how are you doing? Huh? If your lady, there's something in this relationship you need to, it's the best thing you could do is ask questions. So, I have a question for you guys. You guys ready? What is something you work really hard for that made yourself, made you proud of yourself? I don't ask, don't answer, don't say nothing. Have you ever done something and it's like, I'm proud of myself, I work hard for that? Anybody? Yeah? Have anybody, have you accomplished something and maybe you're like, Ugh, and you get, when it's all done and said, you finished it, you did it. And you're like, ugh. Anybody have that? Good. Okay. And let's talk about that feeling of accomplishment, that you did it. You're like, ugh. Ugh. We beat Ignite last week. Ugh. Actually, it's the, we had a picnic last week, and honestly, we want, they want us, and we want them. So next picnic, we'll do a best of three. But there's a steel, it was a good competition. Have you ever beat a competition? Or have you ever like ran a, a marathon or a half marathon? And you're like, ah, yes. Or you beat somebody at a game, or you you challenge yourself on a diet or to abstain something, and you're like, I did it. I did it. Because you know the price you had to pay. This morning, we're gonna come and we're gonna circle back this question. And this is a very uh, awesome question, but we're going to ask, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. So this morning, I, I want to turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 10, and I have it up here, but please do, if you have your own Bible, do you going to highlight your stuff? And it's about the young rich ruler. And it reads like this, as he, this is Jesus, by the way, Jesus was setting out on his journey, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not 
murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your mother and your father. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. Disheartened by the same, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Whew. Let's pray. I think we need to pray after that one. Amen. All right, Father, we just thank you. We ask you, Lord, this morning that you would just let your word be a lamp to our feet. I pray that your word will bring clarity, comfort, encouragement this morning. I pray for those who are tired. I pray your word this morning will refresh, rejuvenate. And Lord, I pray this morning that as we come together as a body and we come to today, we submit everything to you this morning. So Lord, we pray that we may grow and learn your word and learn more about you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say, amen. Now, this passage, I, this passage has been on my heart and this is the situation. Jesus was about to set out on a journey and this man comes and he, there's, Three versions of it, and I chose this one. There's uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And this one, um, others, you'll see that he's young. He's young. He, he has status, which he has power. So he's young and has power. He's a ruler. He's rich. Sounds like The Bachelor. And they're like, oh, my God, that's already attractive. Okay, we don't know if he's attractive or not, but let's just say he is. He he was created by God. Okay, he's he so he has these three going. Also, he's a great guy. He's such a great guy, and this is how we know he's a great guy. He wants to do better. So, like you look at his moral compass, he's like, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Internal life. Now, internal life is everlasting life. It does not mean salvation. It means everlasting life means that you continue to have life with God beyond earth. Amen. So he's not asking for salvation. I want to make that very clear. And salvation is a completely different situation. Internal life is asking for the inheritance of walking for everlasting father. I want to be with the Lord forever. Is that good? And that's what we desire, to be with our maker, to be with our God forever. And he says, what must I do? And what's interesting is that I like, and if you, if you go to a life group, uh, this is a great DBS, by the way. If you want to break it down, this would be really fun. So, but I want, to vo- I want to focus on something very interesting. At the very end, he gets, he gets really sorrow. He went away sorrowful. And I begin to ask this question. Is believing in all of the right things enough? Is having all of the right belief systems in order, was it enough? Because that's what he was asking for. He was asking, he said, and then Jesus right away says, well, why do you call me good? And then he says, you know what? You know the Ten Commandments. So he starts saying the Ten Commandments to this guy. And then he says, I went to Ignite. So I've been doing it since, I've been going, ever since I went, I went to Ignite. So Jesus, I already got that covered. Ignite is our youth group. And they're like, oh, and Jesus says, oh. and then what's, this is what's very interesting. Jesus says to the rich man, you lack one thing. Well, you're not rich if you're, if you're lacking, right? That's very interesting to tell a rich man you're lacking. That's a very ironic approach to a rich man, and I love it. That's, you can learn so much about social cues from Jesus. Jesus was so unorthodox. He was not traditional. He was just so different. He, he tells the rich man, you lack one thing. Tell a rich person what they lack, and you might fire them up. Isn't that interesting? And he says, all you have to do is go sell everything you got and give to the poor. You'll have treasures in heaven, and then you can come follow me. Now, In James chapter 2, verse 17, it says, So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Faith needs actions. 
So we are not just going to come to church, and here at CF Church, we have values. We want to serve one another. We don't, just, we don't just say we love God. We want to do for God. We want to serve for God. We want to be able to be a blessing, and we want God to use us. We're not just being, we don't want to be just another church on the corner. We want to be able to be a church with influence that will make impact in the city. We want, to, we want to share the gospel. We want to share the love of Jesus. Amen? You know, we're not just called to sit here and say, okay, all right, I believe in that. Okay, order one, order two, order three. Okay, check. Perfect. Otherwise, that's called religion. And we're not here to improve your religion. We're here to improve our relationship with Jesus because it's based on verbs. It's based on movement. And, and it's based that we learn to, to do and move. Amen? But in this case, the man action needs faith. And oftentimes, his actions is hard because this right here, the young rich ruler, could not trust Jesus on that journey. He could not trust Jesus. Now, here's the thing. The rich man was a performer. He was an achiever. If you, have, if you know the Enneagram, his Enneagram looks like a three. He, his main thing was all about success. His main thing was all about showing and achieving. And he was achieving, and he had, and he had a lot to show for it. But he, the one thing he lacked was he could not trust Jesus with his actions. He could not trust Jesus in that journey. And because of that... He had the faith, but could not let his faith change his lifestyle. Think about that. Let's just stop for a moment. What if the story was different? What if he said, okay, Jesus, I'll go sell everything, give to the poor, and I'll follow you? Who would, it, who would that person be? Because I'll tell you right now, after that situation was done, we still don't even know the rich, young, rich ruler's name. There's no mention of his name. We don't know. It. We don't even know he, who he is. All we know is that he, he did well in life. He did well on the earth. But that was it. How many of us believe there was, much, there was more for him? There was so much more for him. You imagine if Jesus came up to you and said, hey, come follow me. And I'll take you on a journey. What would that, what would that be like? If he, like, in the flesh, he comes and he's like, Sergio. I don't think, I don't think he's like that. Hold on. Jesus, just, Jesus is way better than that. Like, hey, what's up? I think he's, like, happy. I think he's, like, I always think of Jesus as, like, a, a, a really good friend of mine. And he's like, hey, come with me. I'm not going to tell you what's up. I'm not even going to tell you where we're going. Just trust me. You've got to trust me. But you've got to sell your house. Sell everything. And, and Sergio's so like, I work really hard for that. He had faith, but it wasn't a faith that changed his lifestyle. It was a faith that had to accommodate his lifestyle. And this morning, this passage is a very deep passage because it has a lot to do with the heart. Your heart is where your motive is at. Your heart is where your intentions are at. Your heart is where your attachment. I, I, had, a, I had a slide up there that I, I, I took it off, but I, um, it's a nostalgic. I'm a very nostalgic person. Um, and the image I had up there was a video controller. And it was Super Nintendo controller. You guys remember that? Yeah. N64? Zelda? Look at you guys. All right, are you ready for this one? The public payphone. <laughs> you remember calling your mom from the the payphone, and then but if you were if you knew how to use it really well, you know that you would, you could always get your quarterback. You would just say, "Hey, I'm at the mall. I'm ready." And you have a call that call from, "Hey, I'm at the mall. I'm ready." <laughs> You didn't know that on. That's the hack. You had to be advanced on that one. How many, how many of us remember the pager? Remember the pager? You're like, you pulled out your pager. You're like, oh, hey, who is it? My mom. 
you get a page. There's something about there's something about a nostalgic memory of these products or these uh, the tangible things because we have moments with them, right? Is it possible that you and I, as human beings, are, that's the way our soul works? When something is precious moment, we attach to it, right? If we work hard for it, our soul is attached to it. If it, if it's, if I just said Super Nintendo, I, I said Zelda, some of you guys are like, oh, and now all of a sudden you got to go buy Zelda. There, there, there's certain things that, that just kind of like your, your heart just kind of grabs it without you even grabbing it. it. Or you have no intentions to grab it like that. But it, it becomes something so precious to you. How about like Christmas? Do anybody have Christmas uh, traditions? Now, I know there's, uh, there's some couples in here that are like diehard uh, like Christmas people. They're just, they, their, their lights go up in, in October. And they have, a, they have a game plan and everything. Santa's going to come out and the whole thing. There, there's some people that are love Halloween. There's some people that love Thanksgiving. There, there's just, I have a, we have a neighbor. Um, you come in on, once you get in, I, I, I haven't talked to you about I don't know if you know this, but I'm talking to my wife, by the way. Um, for those who are online. Yeah. So, but there's, when you drive in and then you go all the way down, and our neighbor, I noticed that every, I'm not, not just holiday, there's a season. So she had like this uh, March shamrock flag banner and on her on her house and then on the 18th she took it down and i'm like wow you're so dedicated like you're intentional about this her heart is in this celebration of the days that woman tells me that she's living her days and she's making an account i mean because i did not think but then I, but then again you have to question all right why are you paying attention i don't know I'm just curious about my neighbor. My question is this morning, how is your faith changing your lifestyle? Or is your lifestyle changing your faith? I'm going I'm to ask, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask it again, okay? How is your faith changing your lifestyle? Or is your lifestyle trying to change your faith? Oftentimes, when we let... We, my lifestyle has to, has to accommodate my faith. And say, you know what? I, I, I have a lot to do today, and my faith is my second thought. But if you go to this question, how is my faith changing my lifestyle? My, my lifestyle will submit to my faith. And when I say my faith, it's Jesus. My time submits to Jesus. My possession submit to Jesus. And when we talk about this, then we have to ask the question. It starts to impact us in all the different places in our lives. Our lives can be summed up in all those different words. Some of us here, you have, pu- you have public reputation. Some of us here, you, your household is very important to you. Some of us here is that you're mentally, socially, physically, some of you guys are, are dedicated to some of these words. These words are so crucial. Your heart is attached to some of these things. And if I came to attack one of those things, you will react. You will say, do not mess with my house. Do not mess with my physical time. Do not mess. Because there are some things that we put, our lives right here, all those things mean something to us. And there's, there's something attached to this. But when we look at the young rich ruler, we looked at this man could not detach from possession. He could not, he could not detach from his hard work. And that's the thing. That's the thing. Sometimes we work so hard, we only work for, we work and the glory goes for us. And that's a heart check. We need to begin to check our hearts and say, oh, I made it and I became wealthy. I will do this. And that's not what, that's not what our faith is shaping us to be. Our faith is saying, God help me. The Holy Spirit led me here. And I begin, and because if I become, if I see the victory, it's because of him. 
I've learned to trust in the Lord. And we sing songs like that. We read scriptures like that. We read poems like that in the Bible. We see that God is saying, trust me, I will lead you. Amen? Well, here's another thing. Sometimes you're going to work really hard for something. And, God, and sometimes the Lord might say, I need you to give that up because I'm going to give you something else. Now, that's such an easy thought. That's something I could just say like that. Huh? And then we work really hard. Yeah, I work really hard. And then if God wants to, he'll take it. But when the day comes and your name is, is coming out of God's mouth, it is time. Hold on. I will give you my Xbox, Lord, next week. I've got to give it to you. Okay. Hold on. I bless you with that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I need to pay off this, 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 this. And then and the Lord's like, I didn't ask you to do that. I, I gave you the money so that you can go and I'm going to use you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. But, but, but look at my knees. And it's funny that I'm looking up there like, I can't just say, like, well, I can be, like, right here. Well, where is God? Right God. <laughs> no, a 3D microphone. We need to look at change, and we need to ask ourselves with change. When it comes to changes, when it comes to change within us, it has to start with questions. And this is one of them. What needs to be surrendered? What do you need to, to surrender and leave your, your accomplishments like this? Because this man could not, he could not surrender. He couldn't detach himself from these things. And sometimes when we, I, I tell you right now, there are times that God is going to want to take you from glory to glory. He's going to want to take you from place to place. And I, I, I can tell you this, I can testify this. If you choose to follow the Lord with all your heart and you surrender to things, the Lord will take you to places you never even dreamt of. The Lord will begin to pour his favor upon you, and he'll begin to use you like you never even dreamt of. I can testify up here. I can tell you story where I was in a situation where I did not have the money to go there. And God says, but do you trust me? Do you believe that I would take you? Yes, sure. And I'm like, okay, fine. And I get there, and, so, and God provides. God will, and that's the journey of God. The other question we have is, where is my obedience to Jesus on a daily basis? Now, I'm going to say something about this, and this is very important as a church. One of the main things I want to explain is that if you don't know how to determine this question, that is okay. If you don't know how to define that you're, obe you're obeying the Lord every day, that is okay. That's okay. But I'm going to tell you what is not okay. It's being okay not knowing. That's why we have leaders and mature people that you can say, how do I know? You need to learn how to come up and ask questions. Ask questions, you get answers. If you don't get answers out of questions, you'll be walked with. People don't grow because they don't ask questions and they're not willing to grow, which leads to the next one. Why do you want to grow? Why do you want to grow in the Lord? And that's the, that's the question. Are you, growing in your, are you growing in your lifestyle or are you growing in your faith? If you're growing in your faith, then it's going to impact your lifestyle. And if, you ask, and if we're talking about lifestyle, it's how you think, it's how you see, it's how you talk, it's how you walk, it's how you conduct yourself. What's change? What is changing in your life? What's, what's so different about you? What's your work ethic like? Are you, are you the most pleasant uh, co-worker? Wow. Woo. Are you a pleasant sister? I'm looking at my sister. Are you a pleasant brother? Are you a pleasant father? How is your lifestyle pleasant these days? When we talk about change, you see, I, I know people, and I went to school with people And man, I, I, I remember going to college, and I remember just being around people that were just really, really Bible smart. I mean, 
I he gave me migraines. And the, and the people just knew their Bible. Well, at the historical AD 73, they're like, oh, shoot. AD 73, we're going all the way back there. And then, well, that's not the right translation. And, we're like, oh. and I remember just feeling so intimidated one time. And then, again, this is very good when you have people that are more mature than you are in the faith. They've been walking. And I remember feeling kind of discouraged in my class. And one of my RAs, it was my first semester in Texas. And uh, my, my RA comes up to me and goes, hey, like, you look so like bummed out. What's going on with you? I said, man, there's just like really smart people here. And I'm not, I feel really dumb. He goes, you know what? At the end of the day, you can be really smart, but really dumb with your life. Hmm. He goes, yeah, just because they know the Bible doesn't mean they live the Bible. That's the smart intelligence, because that's the change we need. Not about how smart you are. It's not about, and don't get me wrong, learn, increase it, but use it and demonstrate it. That's why we grow. Here at CF Church, we want to be the change. Why? Because that's what our kingdom is about. Amen? Change. I love what, he, what Jesus said in the, in the text. It said Jesus looked at him and loved him. That was to me, that was awesome. And I say, like, this guy's like saying, yeah. And in my youth, he's like talking to Jesus, right? And he say, I done this in my youth. And, this, this, this. and Jesus just looking at him. And he's just like, he look, I, you imagine if Jesus is just looking at you. And, he, and then somebody described, you know what? Jesus loves, Jesus loved this dude. And he's just like, I, and he said, looking at him and he loved him. Jesus is looking at you, loving you, and inviting you on this journey. That's what I got from the text. He's looking at you. He loves you. You're, you're learning how to walk in your spiritual. You're like, but some of us are, are accomplishing. You're, you're, you're working hard day in and day out. Some of you guys are suffering. Some of you guys are going through challenges and battles. Maybe, you're, you're, maybe your heart has been attached to the pain. Maybe your heart has been attached to the, to the past. Maybe, you, maybe the Lord is saying you need to let go of your wrongs. Maybe, maybe some of us here have been suffering, and you think that's your destiny. I'm just doomed. I'm just, I'm just, I'm always be this. And, some, and maybe, you're, maybe you're, you're opposite of the young rich ruler. You're saying I'm young, and I'm unsuccessful, and I don't have, and I'm going down the drain. And I feel like a loser. I feel like a failure. And Jesus is right there saying he's looking at you, and he loves you. And he says, drop it all. Come with me. Drop it. Drop your past. Drop it. And I'll show you a new lifestyle. Amen? We should make that a goal this year. We should make that a goal this month. Well, how is my lifestyle changing? What needs to change? And how can Jesus help you on that? Amen? That good? Are these good questions? Is anybody thinking about their lifestyle? Yeah, good. Oh, dang. You know, the, I'm going to tell you guys something personal, okay? Um, when I ask some questions and I look at you guys, you guys are like, I, you guys are very encouraging. <laughs> and it's, it's nice to know that we're, uh, we're part of a growing church. It's nice to know that you're part of a group of people that are willing to see changes for Jesus in their personal lives. Otherwise, I would just tell you, oh, man, it would be so hard to preach to people that are unwilling to change. Have you ever met somebody who's unwilling to change? That's just the way I am, and I'll always be that way. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just what I'll always be. You are not called to do that. Nowhere in the Bible will ever support that statement. The only one who has the right to that statement is Jesus. God says, I will be the same today, yesterday, and forever. Not you. You need change. <laughs> in fact, you and I need more of Jesus. Amen? The only one who has that right to say, like, one, well, I always did it. And you ever just say somebody to dig their heels? Not, God's not calling you to dig your heels and, and like, and it just you, you become a very like that's, that's what it sounds like. You, you come and you're just manifesting, 
And then at the end you said, and that's why I'm a Christian. <laughs> you need to go read the life of Jesus. Go read the life of Jesus. And then, and then come back and tell me that. Don't even, don't even go to Genesis. Don't even go to Revelation. Just go to the Gospels. And then you can come tell me that. If you can't, I build everything on the word of Jesus. He is my Savior. He is my friend. He is my Lord. He is my protector. He is my helper. He is my director. He's my pastor. He's, he's my demonstrator. He's the, he's the perfect example. He, he, he died on the atonements for me. I begin to look and I say, if I come under all those things, my life will eventually change because of Jesus. My stubbornness and my, my citizenships even change. So when you start thinking like a true citizen of the kingdom, you become less earthly mi mindset. You begin to learn how to talk differently. You begin to look at people differently. And, you can be, and then when you spend enough time with the Father of, of heavens who has a heart for people that are breaking and broken, you can look at the brokenness of others and say, I love you. You don't know me. The, hostile, the hostility of the world. But the love of Jesus comes and says, I am right here with you. That's what happens when you drop your possession. That's what happens when you drop your, your achievement. That's what happens when you drop your pain. And you say, I'm going on that journey with you, Lord. That's what it looks like. And he begins, you begin to experience things. And you say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whatever you do this morning and whatever you think, Whatever you do, listen to this, and, I, and this is kind of hard for me to say because this is really personal to me. But whatever you do, when you're growing with the Lord, you need to understand that whoever you think you are and whatever you say about yourself, whatever you're so gun ho on, walking with the Lord requires you to change your identity. And if, he, and if the Lord is calling you to change your identity and everything that you think you are, that's what you say you are. It's what God says who you are. And guess what? Because he's good. When Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one's good except God alone. Was that, what was he saying there? You are good because you are God. Jesus. Imagine if Jesus calls you and says, what if Jesus changed your identity? Would it be good? Would it be good? Of course it would be good because we trust him. That's what we're talking about. When we talk about change in the church and we talk about growing, we're talking about our, our true identity. And we have to learn to let go and say, everything I've experienced in the past, everything I've I became, I'm changing into more like him. And less of me, more of you, Lord. Less of me, more of you, Lord. You see? You see that? And Jesus said to Simon, he says, come follow me. And he dropped their nets. You know what that meant? When the fishermen, they said, I dropped my identity, and I'm trusting you to lead me bigger than this. You see this? That's you. That's you. God is going to take your identity, and he's going to give you a journey. He's looking at you. He loves you. And he says, come on, let's go. Oh, we don't need that net. Oh, no, no, we don't need your possession, and I don't need your money. No, no, just come on, let's go. Let's go. Where are we going? Oh, good question. You'll see. Come on. But we don't have, no, 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 watch, wait. And that's God. Isn't that amazing? And you say, but, and you're, and you're, and you're having an identity crisis, but, 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 and she said, no, 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 just, just trust me. Trust me. Trust me. How many of us are ready for that journey? Let's all stand. This morning, 
Can we respond to the journey this morning? Do you, do, does anybody need to drop things and say, you know, I need to drop this? What needs to be surrendered? What needs to be surrendered this morning? And I want to take this moment. I, I just want to take maybe like a minute. And can I have you uh, play? It? I want to take one minute. And can we just take a, a minute to reflect what can we drop this morning? So that we can continue. Some of you guys are, are, are on that journey. But it's just like a concept of dropping things. We just got to learn to just drop it. Just drop it. That good? So can we just take, as Rose Bell, going to just play a song? No words, no nothing. Let's just take one minute, maybe two minutes. That might be a little too long for some of you guys. But one minute, at least one minute, okay? And really take the time. Just give one minute. Just, I'm asking you, all you have to do, just give yourself at least one minute to actually try to do this, okay? Let's begin. This morning, before we dismiss and before I pray out, I want to do something s symbolic, okay? Did you think of, if you don't have it, this could be a good question to keep pondering on, okay? But for those who are ready this morning to drop it, maybe you literally have to do it, or maybe you need to let go of the thought or the emotion. Maybe it's pain, maybe it's embarrassment, maybe you have unforgiveness. Maybe it's anger, maybe uh, pride. It could be anything, okay? But what I want to do this morning, as a, as a CF Church family, if you are ready, which I'm going to do, I'm going to pretend that I have the thing right here in my hand like this. I'm making a fifth. Then I'm going to just drop it. And just drop it. Drop it for the home. But do it. Just drop it. Okay? Now lift your hands and just thank them. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your words because you're looking at us, you love us, and you invite us on this journey with you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Even when we don't deserve it, Lord, and even when it's hard, we drop it. We'll drop it for you. And we're going to follow you, Lord, because you are worthy of it all. We worship you and we thank you. I thank you for each person here. I pray that they may be free. I pray the load is lighter today. I pray today that they be reminded that they are not alone on this journey. You are walking with every one of us. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray and everybody say. God bless you guys. You guys have an awesome Sunday.